Now, we talked about some dimensions of variation in the robot or android, but we can also consider human variation, how we vary in our sensitivity to androids. So we may vary in uh, physiological dimensions, for example, d genetic, developmental, visual and auditory acuity, age, and these can have an impact on how we would interact with an android. For example, at the World Expo, some old people arrived. Um, there was an old man who was standing right next to the android and asked, where is it? Where is the android? So he didn't even notice that it was an android. He thought it was a human being. That really doesn't happen to young people. And it's interesting to find out why that happened. Was it because of visual acuity or something going on in the brain? Uh, we can also consider human dimensions of variation from a cognitive level. We get used to things. For example, when I was working in a mental institution, it was very strange at first to find people drooling, throwing rocks, breaking windows, hitting themselves, talking to themselves, this sort of thing. But I got used to it, and after a while, it just seemed normal for the place. Well, David Hansen has had a similar experience with his androids. For example, he will present his androids partly open, with wires hanging out, with motors that are visi visible, and people find it's very strange if you have a human-like face that's in motion, but then you have some wires hanging out. But after a while, people get used to it. And we may think of the uncanniness as something negative, but some people may actually miss the freak value. It can be attractive, just as we can find horror films and these kind of things attractive. Another cognitive point is maybe a traumatic experience could affect the way people view robots or androids. For example, there was someone who was very disturbed by an, ex by an experiment that I had um, that showed androids, robots, and a human being in video. And he thought the human being might be a video, might be a video of an android, and he found that to be very unsettling because Actually, he had a job in a factory, and he was replaced by a machine. So the idea of machines re replacing people was a traumatic experience for him. And so maybe out of 50 or 100 or 200 uh, participants, one person could have a personal experience that really makes him very different from everyone else. Also, we can look at the social level. We can look at relationships, family dynamics, and sexual fetishism. This can also affect how people view technology in different countries. For example, in Japan, there's a quite a prevalence of sexual fetishism when it comes to anime characters, and some of that may spill over in the way people view androids. And we can also look at cultural influences. For example, in uh, anime, we have robot heroes in Japan, like Atom Boy, and uh, this can affect the way people view androids.